So you've just retired. Congratulations. Now you have to figure out cash management. How are you going to manage your cash in retirement? That's the question we're going to tackle in today's video. My name is Rob Berger. This is the Financial Freedom Show where we talk about investing and retirement. If, the, if those topics are of interest to you, I encourage you to subscribe to the channel. I also send out a newsletter every Sunday morning. You can check that out. There's a link below this video where you can sign up. Today's question comes from a viewer named Irving. He emailed me. He said, I'm a 65 year old retiree. Could you recommend a good bank account setup? So that's what I'm going to try to do in today's video. And I think as retirees, there are some unique challenges that we face that at least need to be considered as we think about the types of accounts we need uh, to basically take all of those investments we've worked hard to save and actually turn them into cash that we can spend. So what are those unique challenges? Well, the first is, you know, when we were working, we just got a paycheck every couple of weeks. But now in retirement, we are probably managing multiple investment accounts. We could have still have workplace retirement accounts that maybe we haven't rolled over. Uh, of course, we could have multiple IRAs, a Roth IRA, traditional IRA, maybe even a third rollover uh, IRA. If we have a significant other, they have all of those accounts potentially as well. We could also have HSA accounts as well as, of course, taxable investment accounts. And then there's always Social Security and possibly pension or annuity income. So we have to sort of juggle all of these different accounts that could be at d different financial institutions. And so that's a challenge that we have to deal with that we didn't have when we were working. The other difference is that once we get to, to 72 currently, we have the required minimum distributions to, to manage, and those could be coming from multiple accounts. And then I think a third challenge for retirees is we have to think a little differently about our cash reserves because we don't have that steady check coming in uh, you know, a couple of times a month. And so we have to be very careful that we always have access uh, to cash and to have access to it pretty quickly. And so I think there are definitely some unique challenges to cash management once we retire. Now, the good news is I think the basic account setup doesn't change. I think we fundamentally we need three things, and this is no different than when we're working. We need a spending account, some you know, a checking account, somewhere where we can actually spend all the money we've spent years saving. So we need some kind of spending account. We need a place to hold cash reserves that we, you know, money for an emergency, but what, however much we've decided to keep in, in, in cash beyond what we're spending, say in the current month, these would be accounts where we can earn as much interest as possible, but also have very quick access to the money. So we need some type of cash reserve account. And then I think the third thing for the, at least the majority of people, uh, you need a credit card, right? And that's really where we do the vast majority of our spending. So those are sort of the three components we need to think about uh, when we come up with a cash management system in retirement. Now, let's talk about each of them briefly. Then what I'm going to do is give you uh, suggest two different sort of setups you might consider. And then, then I'm going to also uh, suggest some tools you can use uh, to help manage it all. So first, let's talk about each type of account. On the spending account side, I think they're just basic requirements we need. For us anyway, we, we need to we need check writing ability. We don't write a lot of checks, but we do. And I, I need I need to be able to write checks. Um, I think we of course need a debit card. We don't actually use our debit card to, to make purchases. I just feel the security of a credit card is better. If someone gets a hold of my number, I don't want them draining my, my, my checking account. And so but but we sometimes of course want to take out money from an ATM. So we're going to want some kind of debit card. We want the ability to pay bills online. We do that a lot. And so we want to have that ability. And then the, the fourth thing that's at least important to us is the ability to, to, to deposit a check with our smartphone. Again, in retirement, probably not depositing a lot of checks, but occasionally they come in and having the mobile check deposit is just uh, very convenient. So those are sort of the, the four requirements for us. Now, additional requirement for some of you is you may want to earn interest on your checking account. We try to keep as, as little in the checking account as possible, so that's not necessarily as important for us, but it may be important for you. So that's the spending account. On the cash reserves account, I think you know we want to earn as much interest as we can. We want it to be safe, uh, and we also want to have access to it, right? We want to be able to get access to it reasonably quickly. So here, 
I think there are a couple of, of options to think about. Of course, traditionally, you could go with a savings account or a money market account, or perhaps short-term certificates of deposit. These are all bank accounts, FDIC insured. Uh, the thing to keep in mind, and we'll talk about the, the two possible setups for specific bank accounts, but uh, it's likely uh, with those types of accounts that you're gonna have to have them at a separate bank. So for example, if you use a traditional sort of brick and mortar bank for your checking account, it's unlikely that they're gonna offer those types of savings products with very good interest rates. You may have to go to an online bank to get the best rates, that's perfectly fine. It's easy to transfer money from your traditional checking account at a brick and mortar bank to an online bank and back. Uh, the thing to keep in mind though is that transfer, when you, when you need the money, it's gonna take a couple of days, a couple of business days. So you've gotta keep that in mind as you manage your cash. Another possibility for cash reserves are just T-bills. These are short-term U.S. government bonds. They're called T-bills, and you can buy them at just about any brokerage. Again, you can sell them, but you've got to keep in mind there's going to be some time for that, that's, that transaction to settle and for you to actually get your hands on the cash. But that's another place to keep short-term reserves. That's one of the, the ways we do it. And then there's also a money market fund and most of the brokers offer them. I'll actually show you a couple examples of them in just a minute. All right, so then with credit cards, I've talked a lot about this. You know, I'm a big believer in getting the most rewards that, that we can from our credit cards. And as you may know, if you've watched this channel, I save and invest our credit card rewards. It's up to about 30,000 right now. Uh, I won't go into details on that. What I will do is below the video, leave a link to a couple of articles on one of my sites, allcards.com, that lists some of the best cashback cards that you can get. But again, I think that's important. Credit cards are just very secure to use and you get some rewards. So sort of with that background, now let's go to the, the options. And I think, you know, the first option is probably not much different than what you did when you were working, right? It's sort of the traditional banking option. And so for that, what I like is to use a traditional brick and mortar bank where I can actually go into a bank branch if I need to. Now, here's the deal. Fortunately, I don't go in uh, to our bank's branch uh, very often, but when I need to, it's usually because it's really, really important. And so I'm gonna use a traditional brick and mortar bank in this setup, and it's gonna be one that has a branch near me. You can find plenty that either offer free checking or perhaps you have to keep a certain amount of money in the account to get free checking, but uh, very easy to meet those requirements. But again, with that set up for my cash, if I'm gonna use uh, continue with sort of a traditional bank, I'm gonna use an online bank for whether it's a, a savings account, a short-term certificate of deposit, uh, or perhaps a money market account, all FDIC insured, uh, to get the most interest that I can. Again, I'll leave some links below this video for all of those options. And if you go this route, you just have to keep in mind Transferring that money back when you need it, it's gonna take a couple of days, so you have to keep that uh, in mind. But that would be your basic traditional banking setup, probably no different than something similar to what you were using when you were working. However, I do wanna mention another setup, and this is one that I'll probably move to, I haven't yet, but probably will at some point, and that is to try to keep everything in one place at a broker. So a lot of the, the, the large brokers offer bank accounts, FDIC insured checking accounts, probably wouldn't use their savings accounts, we'll talk about that. Many of them offer debit cards, online bill pay, mobile check deposit, even credit cards. So let me show you some examples of that. And we'll start with Fidelity. I believe Fidelity's cash management options are probably the best in the industry. And they pretty much offer everything that you might need. Uh, we'll start with the spend, you can see it here. And by the way, I'll leave a link to this below the video. I was actually looking at it earlier. You can make payments from your spend account. They have, you can see here, they have online bill pay. Uh, you can do uh, free check writing. They have uh, an ATM debit card. In fact, they've got a picture of it here. And so, you know, this is a traditional bank account. You can see it's uh, in the savings, FDIC in coverage. They actually have it up to 1.25 million for savings accounts. I actually wouldn't use that. I'll show you an alternative in just a second but they do offer FDIC insured certificates of deposit. You can see that here. Those I think are really good uh, with good rates. Uh, so you kind of have everything you need in one place. Uh, they also offer an excellent credit card, 2% uh, cash back on all purchases. Uh, again, you don't have to use their credit card. 
uh, but um, you can. And so you could have everything in one place. And here's the thing. Uh, obviously, if you have uh, investment accounts at Fidelity, it's very easy to, to pull money out of, say, an IRA for once you're in retirement and move it to your cash management account to spend it. But even if you have accounts at other brokers, think Schwab or, or Vanguard or, or Merrill, Merrill Edge, it's very easy to set up automated and automatic transfers from those brokers to Fidelity. No different than you would transferring to uh, a traditional bank. So I really like what Fidelity offers. I think this is a very good uh, option. Now I mentioned I probably wouldn't go with their actual savings products, like a savings account, uh, uh, because their rates aren't great. But if you're gonna use a, a, a brokerage, again, I mentioned their CDs and they have short-term CDs that pay great rates. The other option is in a brokerage account just to buy T-bills from the US government and they're paying, I think, very competitive rates compared to, say, a savings account or a certificate of deposit. And again, you could keep them all here uh, in this example uh, at Fidelity. Now, Fidelity isn't the only broker that offers this, and you can you can search in, uh, say, Google for your broker and then cash management. So I've done that for a couple, and I'll show you. Here's Schwab. So I just sh uh, Googled Schwab cash management, and they have very similar uh, features. They also offer a, a credit card. You can see they have uh, good rates on certificates of deposit. They actually offer a, a, a high yield savings account, but the interest rate's not great. So this is where, again, you might wanna go with T-bills, or you still could combine this with an online bank for savings as well, uh, if you uh, wanted to. Uh, Merrill Edge, again, I was looking at their offers. They have a Visa debit card. They offer bill pay service. So again, there are a lot of options when you want to sort of wrap into a broker all of your cash management needs. Now, one thing I'll mention, Vanguard, poor Vanguard, <laughs> their offerings for cash management are not great. Basically, they don't have the kind of uh, options that we just looked at from Fidelity and Schwab and Merrill Edge. So uh, if, you, if you have accounts at Vanguard, it, you know, the cash management offers they have just probably aren't going to work, at least if you want to have everything at one place. That doesn't mean you need to leave Vanguard. You could just use the cash management options at one of uh, the other brokers. So I really like that idea of wrapping the, the bank account setup that we need with a broker. Now, I mentioned uh, money market accounts, sort of traditional, but those are bank accounts. There is something called a money market fund. It's a mutual fund, so it's not FDIC insured, but they are extremely safe. And so if you go the broker route, or even if you use traditional banks, but want to have a lot of your cash wherever you keep your investments, uh, I mentioned T-bills, I mentioned these brokered CDs, but you could also do a money market fund, and I'll just show you a couple of them. We'll go first to actually Vanguard. So here's, it's, it's ticker VMFXX. I have um, uh, 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 money at, in this mutual fund. You can see their current uh, yield is around 3.64%. Uh, so this is certainly a reasonable option. Fidelity offers uh, a money market fund. And by the way, most of the big brokers do. This is ticker SPRXX. Uh, its current yield is uh, almost identical to Vanguard's. So this would be a place where you could keep cash reserves. Again, keep in mind, if you're gonna sell it, it can take some time to actually get access to the money. So you just need to plan accordingly. So those are sort of the, I think the two reasonable setups, sort of the traditional bank route, or one that I like a lot is sort of wrapping it into a broker that ha offers all of these. But keep in mind, you can use a co combination of both. So you could use the brokerage spending account and maybe their, their money market fund or their broker CDs or T-bills, but you could also keep some money, say in an online bank if you wanted to as well. It's not like you have to do all of one or the other. Now, the last thing I want to mention are tools. There are there are tools that can help you keep track of all of this because if you're like me, you've got a lot of different accounts and no matter what bank setup you use, you want to be able to kind of see it all in one place. So let me just show you a couple of the tools. Again, I'll link to all of this below the video. The first and one of my personal favorites is just personal capital. It's a free tool. Now, the company manages investments. So when you sign up for their tool, they're going to want to reach out to you and say, hey, can we give you a free evaluation of your portfolio. I've never done that, you don't have to. I just politely declined, but it's up to you. But 
what I like about their software, it's all online. They have an iPad app. You can look at this on your iPhone. It tracks everything. So it'll, t it'll track all your bank accounts, uh, your checking account, um, your um, credit cards, of course, all of your investment accounts. It does budgeting, as you can see. It'll, it'll uh, give you great uh, uh, charts on your cash flow. If you're saving even in retirement for something specific, you can. there's a savings plan or it tracks your net worth. Um, of course, it goes through, it's got a retirement planner, uh, analyzes your investment fees, so it kind of does everything. And of course, it shows you all of this in, just in, in great charts. So personal capital is one option. Another option I like is Fidelity actually offers what they call full view. Uh, what's powering this is actually something called eMoney Advisor, which is a tool that a lot of investment advisors use. So this is one option and you can link to this accounts that you have at other financial institutions. I would say from a user interface pr perspective, I much prefer personal capital. Uh, but again, if you wanted to keep everything, say at Fidelity, you could use full view. That's another option. A third option I'll mention is Tiller Money. And uh, this is where you can take all of uh, your bank accounts, credit cards, even investment accounts, and they will, will take that data, download it either into Microsoft Excel or Google Sheets for you. And there's a lot of tools that then allow you to create budgets, track your spending, track your investments. I use Tiller not to track our investments. I use personal capital for that, but I use Tiller to track our budget. And it's, it's, um, it, it's really ideal if you're a spreadsheet person. So those are just three examples. There are plenty more. Again, I'll leave links below the video. But again, whatever bank account setup you use, I do think it's important that you use some tool to track it all so you can see everything in one place and, in, and know exactly where you stand. So there you go. Hope that's helpful. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. I'll do my best to help you out any way I can. And until next time, remember, the best thing money can buy is financial freedom.